ActionQ can monitor databases, incoming emails, files, and scheduled tasks. It harvests the data from those events and can use that data to trigger dynamic SQL to update databases, send email messages, or call an application and pass command line arguments. This video focuses on the use case where a database event, basically an SQL result set that matches certain conditions, triggers an email message. To avoid repeat responses for the same database event, we can track an auto increment key in the result set. Another mechanism is to update the source, either set a flag to indicate that it was processed or even delete the source row. And finally, there's the option to create and maintain a mirror table that reflects the data set as of last cycle and filter all those rows that already exist in the mirror table and then refresh the mirror table with last result set. This video will demonstrate this last approach. As data source for our demo event, we'll be using SPBlitz, a free stored procedure that you can get from Brent Ozar's website. I'll provide a link in the description below. SSMS shows that I've already installed SPBlitz in the DBA Tools database. And after running this stored procedure, you can see that it provides various indicators and alerts about the health of my SQL Server. So the lifecycle of our event starts by retrieving data from SPBlitz and if necessary, creating the mirror table for that data and using it to filter the records. Here's what that table looks like in SQL Server Management Studio. You can see that it has the same column set as the stored procedure. After filtering the rows to only those that are not already in the mirror table, Action Queue bundles the full result set into a nicely formatted HTML table that the email message can use. It also takes each row and populates that into column tokens that can be used in responses that are triggered per row instead of per result set. You have a choice of reacting to each row or for the full set of rows. And then Action Queue refreshes the mirror table and sends the email. So let's see how that works within Action Queue. The log panel within the Action Queue manager shows a previous session where the SP Blitz event got triggered because the mirror table did not exist, Action Queue took care of creating it, and then the email got triggered. But I stopped the service at that point and uninstalled it so we can start from scratch and see how we set up the event. There are several dialogues here. Let's begin with the global settings dialog. And in there, you can control the frequency at which monitoring cycles occur and the user context under which the service runs and a few other things. Because the service is running under user context, it can take advantage of anti-authentication vis-a-vis SQL Server. The dialog to encrypt and save strings allows us to store sensitive information encrypted. So in this case, this is the email password, but there's several other options where you can save sensitive strings. The database connection dialog allows us to save named connections to databases. In our case, we need a connection to the DBA tools and you can see that the connection is very simple because we're using anti-authentication. These two dialogues allow us to set outgoing email profiles and incoming email profiles. In our case, we just need to send emails and the profile that we're using is the email from IT and everything that is needed in order to send an email, including an email signature, is specified here and saved so we can simply name the email profile. This button launches a dialog for creating and editing events. Our event has a type of DB mirror. You can see that there's several other types and it is set to be monitored once per five cycles. And each cycle is about three seconds, so about once per 15 seconds. It is using the DBA tools connection and the same connection for the mirror table. The SQL statement can be managed using this dialog. In our case, instead of a simple select statement, we're executing SP Blitz and passing several arguments to it, and we can test it. Now, once the data set is returned, these dynamic tokens are going to be populated so that they can be embedded inside responses, such as email messages, SQL statements, or arguments passed to executables. In our case, we're just passing one of these tokens to an email message, and specifically, we're using the AQ HTML table which contains a nicely formatted HTML table of all the results set. 
we're going to trigger only rows that don't exist in the mirror table. So back in SSMS, here is the mirror table, and I'm going to delete it. And later on, we'll see how it gets created on the fly by the service once the service actually runs and triggers the event. So back in Action Queue, let's see the rest of the response here. This event does not respond with SQL and does not respond by calling an executable. It responds only by sending an email. And the email is using this email profile that we've seen before. And here's the email message. And there's an editor that allows us to design the response. The dynamic tokens that we've seen before are available for embedding inside the email message. So in my case, I can simply double click this token to insert it into the response. Now, if I click preview, I can see the dynamic value that was embedded inside that token because of the test that we just ran. So we'll install the service and we'll start it. And it's going to be tested every five times 3000 milliseconds. So in about 10 seconds from now, it's probably going to be triggered. And because the mirror table did not exist, it got created and then it triggered an email in response to the event. So back in SQL Server Management Studio, if I refresh tables, I can see that indeed the mirror table got created. And here's the email message received through Gmail. And here at the bottom is the signature for the email profile. Back in Action Queue, I can see that the event hasn't been triggered again because of the rows maintained in the mirror table. If I switch over to SQL Server Management Studio, I can view the rows in that table and I can delete two of them. That should trigger the event again. And indeed, here's the trigger. And if I look at my email, I should receive an email for just those two cases. And here's that email. Just to clarify, in real life, you would not be going in and manually deleting records from the mirror table. Instead, you would be reacting to new records arriving from your data source. And this whole logic, of course, applies to many other business scenarios, such as inventory dropping below a certain level, customers placed on credit holds, and so on. 